The new macOS Pixar is fantastically controversial. I mean, not only are the visual changes drastic enough to throw longtime Mac users straight off their rockers, but there are a number of downright puzzling decisions from a usability standpoint. For example, this is how you quick reply to a message on macOS Catalina. And this is how you have to reply to a message on macOS Big Sur? I mean, what? So today, I am going to show you how to fix Big Sur, at least as much as possible, from both a visual and functional standpoint. Let's begin. One of the best additions to macOS Big Sur is Control Center. Some of these menu bar items that used to clutter up the menu bar are now hidden inside of a unified menu. And you know, some things that used to be in other places are added here as well. And on the whole, I think it's really great. But sometimes you still want quick access to some of these items in the menu bar. One that I use all the time is sound. Well, you can actually do this by taking any of these items, holding down and dragging it into the menu bar. You can do it with Wi-Fi, you can do it with sound. In fact, you can even use the new music widget that didn't used to be present in the menu bar before. It really works super well. Of course, with all menu bar items, you can hold down the command key and then move these items around anywhere you want inside the menu bar. And then if you wanna get rid of them, you can drag them away from the menu bar and they will disappear. Now, you can also do this inside of system preferences if you go into dock and menu bar, but that other way is a little more intuitive. There is one reason I wanna show you this menu though. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's this other module section. There are actually a few things that you are able to add to Control Center that are not there by default, amongst which accessibility shortcuts, battery, and fast user switching. Now, if we open Control Center, you'll see that there are new modules down here at the bottom. Fast user switching, if you're on a computer with multiple accounts, allows you to, well, switch users quickly without having to log out. Really, really handy. Other things you can do. Uh, you can see your battery health and percentage, which is pretty nice, as well as items that are using a significant amount of power. And most interestingly, you can use accessibility shortcuts. These are all ready to go right on command. Now, you might wonder, okay, why would I ever need to use these? I, I don't really use accessibility settings. There are actually a few in here that you might find more interesting and more helpful than you'd think, like reduce transparency. When you're working on something in particular that you don't want the background effect of Mac OS or getting in the way. Pretty cool. Uh, on the whole, I'm hoping that they add more of these modules down to Control Center, but Control Center is definitely the best part of Mac OS 11 Big Sur. I like it. There are a number of visual changes in Mac OS Big Sur that I don't like, and I'll get into them in a minute, but the worst offender and one that is easily disabled can be found inside of system preferences in general, and that is allow wallpaper tinting in Windows. See these windows? They're supposed to be black and they're, they're not. They're like a brown orange. And that's because they're trying to match the background color of this wallpaper. And it looks terrible. If I turn this off, oh, okay, look, it's black again. That looks good. If I turn it, ugh, that looks awful. It's even worse in light mode because it changes your, what should be white backgrounds to green, to pink, and your eyes, brains are dumb. They look at those green and you know pink windows long enough that our brain shifts into thinking that's white. And then so when we go to do professional work like edit photos and videos, it's really difficult to do because your brain is all thrown off axis. I don't know why this is a setting by default. Some people like the look of it. Uh, you're wrong. Uh, turn this off, it's disgusting. Thank you. The menu bar in Mac OS 11 Big Sur looks awesome at first glance. And then at second glance, you go, why, why did they do this? You see, look, these translucent kind of blending, flowing colors is really bandy, but the contrast on this is so poor sometimes. It's difficult to see, especially on a smaller monitor. The spacing is wider, but the visibility is worse. It's just very perplexing and not good at all. Here's the thing. You can fix it by actually changing your wallpaper. That's right. You change your wallpaper, you add a little black or white or colored line into it, and it will change the menu bar color. So you don't have to run an app in the background, it's really easy to do. Now, it actually uses a command line utility, which I'm gonna show you how to use. It does have a dependency, and that is Xcode tools. So you need to have Xcode Select installed, um, which if you know what that is, you know how to install it. I would recommend for most people, especially because sometimes all the dependencies don't load, just go to the App Store, download Xcode. It's free, it's easy, and there you go. Once you've got it installed, open up Terminal, which you can find inside of the Utilities folder in the Applications folder, or of course, by searching Terminal in Spotlight, and then paste the following command, git clone, and then the URL. That's going to go fetch this package from GitHub, and then it's going to bring it down to our computer. It's done now. And so what I have to do is actually enter that folder that I just downloaded. So I'm gonna say CD, 
which is change directory to change menu bar color. And once I enter that, I am now inside of the folder I just downloaded. Now I actually need to run it by typing swift build minus C and release. It's gonna do that. And this is why you need Xcode because this requires uh, Swift command line tools. And then once that's done, and it should be pretty quick dependent on your machine, I'll tell you what, it's really fast on my M1 computer, on this Intel computer. It's not quite as fast, but that's okay because now it's done. No, it's not. A few moments later. And now thanks to editing magic, it's done. So we actually need to make the file executable now. So we're gonna type CP and then build, release, change menu bar color. And you can download all of these commands or you can just copy and paste them from the YouTube video. That works just fine. Now, once that's done, if you open up your home folder, you'll actually see that, and I don't ever have to get to my home folder because I'm an old man. Uh, you'll actually see that there's a new folder in here called change menu bar color. Now you can choose to execute commands from here, but we're actually already in this folder. If you ever needed to come back, um, you could open the terminal window in this window and that's, that's very easy. You just type CD and then change menu bar color. But now what I'm gonna do is actually act on that file that I've created. And I am going to make the menu bar a specific color by changing my wallpaper. So what I can do is type the command change menu bar color, and this is calling for the application to run. And then what I need to do is type solid color and then I need to enter a hex code. A hex code is a six digit kind of number or with letters sometimes that tells you what the color is inside of the color space. So if I want my uh, window to be uh, white, for example, I can type pound FFF FFF and bada boom, bada bing. Look at that. My menu bar is now white and it looks freaking awesome. If I wanted it to be black, I run the same command, but instead of FFFFFF, I type 000000. 000, 000, 000, 000. Change it in quotes and boom, check it out. Now my window is black and it looks so good. Now you can get even crazier with this. I could do a specific color. So if I wanted to do this, I could do, I don't know, F83C423. I don't know what color that is, but let's find out. Hey, check it out, it's red. So now my menu bar is red and it's solid rather than this weird translucent crap that's hard to see. Oh, I almost forgot, you can get even crazier than this by doing gradients. So open up digital color meter, it's found inside of your utilities folder, inside of applications. And inside of here, uh, you can use this little app to basically find the hexadecimal value of any color that's currently on your screen. Now in order to change it to hex, you need to go to view and then display values and then display as hexadecimal. Once you've done that, you can actually copy and paste any value you want. So this one over here is, as we can see in the window, is 3C79B1. If I press Shift Command C, it will actually copy that value into my clipboard and then I can paste it into my terminal window. So let's try to make a gradient. And we do that by typing change menu bar color, and then we're going to type gradient. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Okay, now we need to do two values. So we've got our blue, we're gonna paste that into the window. You need to close the quote, and then we're gonna do a second color. So we're gonna open up the quote line, and let's choose the red, or the pink over here. So we're gonna go back to digital color meter, we're gonna press Shift Command C, it's gonna copy that value, and we're gonna paste it right into our window. We press return, and it will run the command, generate a new wallpaper, and check it out. We've got blue on the left side, and red on the right side. Of course, we could change those colors, inverse them. So let's go uh, to the beginning of this line. We'll leave the blue argument there. And then we're gonna repaste the pink and check it out. I messed up. You gotta put a space in there. There we go. <laughs> hey, there you go. That almost looks like the stock wallpaper, except for the stock menu bar, but it's not transparent, which is good because the visibility is a little better. But you know what the right answer is? Uh, the right answer would be uh, solid color and then FFFFFF. This is just the best menu bar and I don't make the rules. There you go. Okay, so this next one's kind of weird because it doesn't really fix macOS Big Sur specifically. It fixes issues with the macOS Finder and therefore is actually usable on other operating systems other than just Big Sur. Now, there's another disclaimer I need to make, and that is that it is not yet compatible with M1 Max because it requires that SIP be disabled, which can't really be done, at least not in the same way as on an Intel machine, on the M1 Max. So you need an Intel computer. You might be wondering, what is SIP? 
Now, system integrity protection, uh, it, it puts the system in a separate read-only APFS container. And the idea is that it prevents malware and other malicious applications from getting access to root. Now, malware without SIP enabled still needs to escalate its privileges to gain access to the file system. So you as the user would actually have to be tricked into giving the malware those permissions and the operating system itself tries to stop that multiple times. It's, it's very uncommon, but theoretically it's still possible. And so SIP locks that down even further to the point where permission can't even be requested. That said, not everything that wants to kind of modify the system is malicious malware. And many people want to use apps that require write access to the system. This app, Extra Finder, does. And so, well, it'll provide you instructions on how to install it. It's fairly simple, but it does require that SIP be disabled. I don't think that's a huge deal. And as long as you're being smart, it's not a problem. But I would recommend you recognize the risks associated with disabling SIP and do so accordingly. Let me show you why you might want to disable SIP for Extra Finder. And I can do that by launching, which you do need to enter your admin password every time you boot the macOS operating system, which is a little annoying, but you'll see why it's worth it. Holy smokes, that doesn't look like the Finder. So this actually takes hostage over the actual Finder itself, rather than some other applications like Pathfinder, which just run alongside the real macOS Finder. So you'll see that our icons, for one, go back to looking fancy, just like the old icons of yore, rather than these new monochrome icons. And then there are another a number of other reasons why this is pretty handy. Uh, for one, there is one thing I really like about this, and this is that there is an up directory button. And so rather than going back, which sometimes takes you to the previous directory, but sometimes if you come from a different location, it actually doesn't. This will always take you up to the folder you were in before or to the parent folder, which is nice. Uh, that's a really handy button. There are a number of other small things that just add up to being quite a lot. Um, some of them, for example, uh, if I have a folder, you can actually see inside of here that it tells you how many items are inside of the folder rather than the raw file size itself. However, I can still click that and it tells me how large the directory is, which is handy. I can actually select multiple files. So let's take these three together. And it tells me that it's 2.12 gigs. That's not really fair because that's a large file. But if I take these, you know, number of photos, it tells me, hey, all of these are 3.7 megabytes together. That's pretty handy. Mac OS doesn't allow you to do that. But perhaps the best reason to use uh, extra finder is I can double click this file tab right here and check this out. I've now got two side by side tabs. I can individually control how they're listed. I can individually control what directories they are in. It is very freaking handy. And boy, howdy, do I like this app. Extra finder is like extraordinarily powerful. If we go inside uh, the preferences here, you'll see just how many things it can do and where it can do them. Um, there's the up button. You can spring load the path, the path bar, which is pretty handy. Another thing you can do is make it so that when you're in list view, all of the columns are automatically adjusted in terms of width. That's really nice. You can copy and paste and cut and paste like normal operating systems rather than doing the uh, shift option command V like you have to do in Mac OS. You can change the appearance. Um, if you use tags and other stuff like that, you can make that work. Of course, you can show colorful uh, icons in the sidebar. Um, there are keyboard shortcuts that are even crazier things. Like if I go up into extra uh, finder up here, I can uh, copy the path of the file that I'm in like in a, in a number of different ways. I can open a new terminal window in this specific folder, which is very handy because that's not something you can do normally. Um, hey, you know what? That would be really handy in our previous application. So remember, uh, we went to... Uh, users and then snazzy laptop and then check it out change menu bar color well normally you'd have to enter cd change menu bar color but now you can just go extra finder uh, new terminal here and now we can run our change menu bar color app pretty handy um, you can also do a number of other things that get really crazy like you can change ownership and permissions which is is nuts that's kind of a unix thing but it's particularly handy when you manage a server very 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 cool very handy and boy howdy I've said that twice now, I think. This is just a super powerful application and I use it a lot. I didn't used to, but I'm a big fan now. 
And it also brings kind of that old school graphite look back, which is quite nice. I think it looks really good with Big Sur. I think it still works, even though it's not specifically designed for Big Sur. It actually hasn't even been updated for Big Sur, but it works well and it's very, very, very powerful. That's Extra Finder. And uh, the best part about it is it technically it costs $5, but I don't know, I don't know why. It's got an unlimited free trial. There's no license screen that pops up. Like it just, it works. And if you want to give the dev $5, you can, but you don't have to. You should probably give the dev $5. It's a really good app. I, I will. I'll do it right now. Okay, so let's say you're like, eh, extra finder. I, I don't like that. That's not for me. But I do like that colorful sidebar. Well, you can get that with a utility that unfortunately, unlike extra finder, is not free, but it's not that expensive. It's $2. And it's inside of an app store called MacForge. That's right. Uh, MacForge is kind of like an app store for apps that run on your system. So again, you need SIP disabled, which is kind of a positive or a negative, depending on how you frame it. But there are some really interesting and clever applications, uh, like who's typing, which shows you in your menu bar if one of your iMessage contacts is messaging you. Pretty handy. Uh, or more menu, which is basically like Bartender, where it puts all of your menu bar items in one menu. Well, it does that with your menus. And so it gives you a lot of screen real estate on the left side of your menu bar and just clean things up. Well, what I wanted to show you is Colorful Sidebar 10. It's $2, so it's not free. But as long as you get it, which I've done, uh, check it out. Now it's enabled, it's running, and wow, I've got colored icons in my sidebar of my finder without having to run extra finder or some kind of finder additive. It just replaces the icons. They look really, really nice. Uh, some of them come from macOS. Some of them come from iOS actually. And uh, yeah, it's it's cool. There's a number of other applications in here that may be worth trying out if you're interested. Uh, that's MacForge. It's a simple one, but uh, you know, if you like that look, it's pretty nice. One of the things you may have noticed about macOS Big Sur is how round everything is. Uh, a lot of people really like it. I hated it, and now I, uh, it's it's fine, okay? Look, everything's round. The dock is round, the icons in the dock are round, the, the windows are round, which they've always been a little round, but look how round they are. Look, look, look at this little, what is this? Look at this little tiny corner. It, it, oh really pisses me off. But look, everything's round. Even the icons are round. Everything's round and everything's happy. But you know what's not round? Your display corners. You still have a squared display. And as the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air screens get closer to the bezel, it is weird to have a rounded laptop with square corners. And so there is this app with a very weird name that makes me uncomfortable. Displayperture? Displaperture? Displaperature? I uh, I don't know. But the point in case is, it's a pretty simple app because what it does is it rounds your corners. Now you can choose which of your corners you'd like rounded. You could only round one of them if you're a monster, or you can round all four of them, or you could just round the top and not the bottom, or you, you get the idea. And then you can choose the radius. So check this out. Now I've got a nice little round up here in my top left-hand corner. It's not a lot, it's just nice. You can go really crazy with this, like more and more, and definitely you shouldn't be doing this, but you could go more and more, and, and that is terrible. But you could if you're a, a monster person, and yeah, you know, there you go. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's fine. You can do it on one display or all of your displays if you have multiple displays connected. And I, I leave it, you know, about right there just so that it matches about the same bevel aggression as the other windows. And it just seems right. I mean, it seems wrong because why do we need to bevel everything? It, it just make the window square. But if we have to make them rounded, make everything rounded. And this, blah, 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 that's what it's called. It does that for you. You can find it in the app store and it's free and it's great. So there you go. Uh, enjoy. Is, is that it? Well, folks, that's all for me. Hopefully I make living with Big Sur just a little bit more tolerable. Those M1 Macs make it. Okay, I guess. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you did not enjoy this video, share it with someone you don't like. Get subscribed and uh, yeah, as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.